Good morning and welcome to Newsdesk here on the Joy News Channel, live from our studio here at Koko Mlemle in Accra. We are live on DSTV Channel 421 and GoTV Channel 144, live around the world on myjournline.com. Coming up, this are government and labor to reconvene today after talks ended inconclusively on Friday to continue negotiation for public sector workers with union leaders demanding a 60% increment in base pay. And it's World Fisheries Day today. We'll tell you the issues in the sector and which of them is needing urgent attention. And the planting for food and jobs market train arrives at Obra Sport at the coming Krumah Circle. We're live there for the latest. Details of these plus uh, the one from Qatar 2022 and business in this hour. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Remember, you're, we are your home of uh, independent, fearless and credible journalism. Stay with us for details. Well, today, 21st November, is World Fisheries Day, a day celebrated every year throughout the world by fishing communities. A recent United Nations study reported that more than two-thirds of the world's fisheries have been overfished or are fully harvested, and more than one-third are in a state of decline because of factors such as the loss of essential fish habitats, pollution, and global warming. The World Fisheries Day helps in highlighting the critical importance of human lives of water and lives it sustains both in and out of water. One of the challenges conf confronting fisheries in Ghana is cycle. My colleague Richard Kojo Nyako has been studying the practice and has come through with this report. The ocean has been in crisis in recent times. <laughs> Overfishing and illegal fishing are said to be fueling the collapse of the marine ecosystems in Ghana. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, over 90% of global fish populations are fished at or beyond sustainable levels. This has become a critical food security issue for the millions who live in Ghana, particularly the nearly 4 million people whose livelihoods depend on the sea. But the industrial vessels from the developed state have been catching the fish that local, small-scale fishers have depended on for generations. And now the stocks are facing collapse. Following Joy News' documentary title, Psycho, when the last fish is caught, the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, headed by Mavis Howard Kumsen, announced a ban on the activities of Psycho. When I took office, barely a month, then we were slapped with um, yellow card. And so I called the EU ambassador from Ghana, and Ambassador said, I said, my sister, what is happening? How can I be slow with such a, 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 a punishment when I just took office barely a month ago? And he says, sister, calm down. It's something that was there before you came, but you are to bear the cross. So let's see. So we started working and I had to move from Ghana to EU with the president to go and talk to them. So I realized I cannot always be begging the European Union to, 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 to be, I mean, uh, easing our sanctions and other things. And so we have to do the right thing. So I came to the Fisher folks to tell them, now please, this is the situation that we are into. And so I will need your support. They also told me what their problems are. And by God's grace, we are moving. But when we were to do the closed season, we met with them with the artisanal people. So the artisanal people made mention of the uh, issue that they have been doing transshipment and other things. It, is, it isn't all of them that can have the money to go on the sea to do the transshipment. So we realized that it wasn't helping. So what do we do? Then they promised me that, oh, madam, since we have agreed to observe the closed season, we bet you, 
when the season is open, we will stop with the cycle. That's the transshipment. And I thought it was a joke. They gave me this promise at the Volta region, Keta, where we did close the sea. And truly, truly, since we opened the sea, as we sit today, I have not had any complaint. Not even from the artisanal people that there, is, there has been any transshipment. Cycle is in a type of a job or a work that helps a lot. And the cycle is the byproduct or the bycatch of the industrial vessels, which will be thrown into the sea. That's we collected it as they regard its waste and we collect this for our livelihood and make a lot of people employment. It's a chain work. We brought this bycatch for Marie. It's not frozen, just fresh. But the moment we brought it at a shore, it gets to rot. So we can we peel today. Those who will throw it away, the vessel owners, then they start frozen it to us. And this has created a lot of employment. Rather throwing it into the sea as waste or to pollute the sea. That's why it has created, we have brought it and it has created a lot of jobs. And Saigo is not purposely for El Mines, it's for the whole Ghana. We'll do details of the story later on, but moving on to other stories now. Government and organized labor will this morning reconvene to continue talks over public sector pay. Labor unions say they want at least 60% increase in their base pay with talks last Friday ending inconclusively. As the stakeholders return to the table today, what is to be expected? Kweku Asante has more in the following report. This crucial meeting of a salary increase ended in a stalemate with organized labor unwilling to go back on their demands. A furious Deputy Secretary General of the Trades Unions Congress, Joshua Ansa, said life had become unbearable for many workers. If they really mean to read the budget, then they should be serious with these negotiations. I'm upset. We are not happy about the way things are going. We are not happy at all. And Ghanaian workers are suffering. You are all workers. We are all suffering. Look at what the living standard is at today. Executive Secretary of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, Isaac Bampuado, told journalists the government was considering their proposal. We went through the proposal that we had presented to government. And it looks like there's no mandate from government. So we have asked the meeting to be adjourned for government to come back with a proper mandate. Meanwhile, Deputy Employment and Labor Relations Minister Bright Rekubrobe says government couldn't reach any consensus with organized labor hence the decision to adjourn the meeting to today. With the 2023 budget set to be read this week, a decision must be taken in time to be factored in the appropriation which will be passed by parliament. The question though is if government can afford labor unions' demands in this current harsh economic climate. Kweku Asante, Joy News. We can now speak with the General Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, Nat Thomas Musa, uh, who joins us through Zoom. Now, so where are we now with regards to your negotiations with government? So thank you very much. Good morning to your good morning to yourself and all your viewers. Uh, I think as of last week, Friday, when we and uh, where the meeting ended inconclusively, we were thinking that today we will reconvene, but as of now, we've not yet received any invitation. So I cannot confirm whether the meeting will come on or not because we have not received any invitation. But oh. uh, as of last week when we were leaving, we have then given them our proposals. And the proposals, uh, we have three main items. The first one is that as of 2010, the relativity ratio was 1.7. And the understanding was, was that steps should be taken to ensure that we close that particular gap. 12, down the, 12 years down the line, nothing has been done. And it is actually widening the, the, the wage gap 
youth is not something that we should encourage and it's making workers worse off. That is number one. The second item has to do with the differentials between the minimum wage and then the base pay. If you recall, in the year 2014, workers were given 10% uh, were given 10% pull-up. There was no increment on the base pay, but the minimum wage we had to saw some kind of increment with the understanding that the following year, which is the 2015, measures will be taken. Unfortunately, in the year 2015, what happened was that the workers were given 30% increment on the the base pay simply meaning that workers were worse off because technically speaking it means the only three percent that workers received but mean that 2014 nothing was given so these are some of the issues that organized labor made it clear to the meeting that these things ought to be corrected you know after the after we've corrected them then we can look at adjustment that to be put on these two main issues and that gives us the third item so these were the items that we discussed leading to what leading to the proposal of 60% uh, increment on the big speed. Then we take it out from there. Mm. Now, we know the meeting ended inconclusively. What were the responses government tabled to your request that resulted in the meeting ending inconclusively? Yes. Yes, government made uh, table something. I don't want to get into those things. Government table something. Now, what government table? Looking at where we are, based upon the, these three items, analysis and work that we have done, and uh, what government has tabled, we saw that no, hey, that is not the way to go. And that if government is willing to negotiate and also appreciate the issue that we have raised, that for the past twelve years we really bear the brunt of all the economic challenges. Since 2014, also we've looked on for this wage differentials to be wide, the gap to be widened, among other things. Mm -hmm. If care is not taken, the Ghanaian worker will be always be worse off. And the earlier the correction shall be done, the better for all of us. And mm -hmm. so, this particular time, we felt that the time to have these things corrected is now, and that okay. is where we are. And we were thinking that this particular uh, today some invitation will come for us but we don't have any invitation yet and so we cannot guarantee whether we are meeting today or not because mm. the onus is on government to give us that invitation and when the invitation comes we will certainly respond accordingly mm. well the invitation hasn't come today but i'm sure you have expectations as to when this meeting should happen and the sort of things you would want to hear in that particular meeting what are those can you share with us oh yes now we we the, the ball now is in the court of uh, government. What we what we have done our analysis. You see, this is not like the normal negotiations we normally do. No, there has been certain wrongs that have been done in the past. Hmm. The wrong number one is that there is a gap of three percent that should be covered, which has not been covered, and that thing has been there for twelve good years going to 13 years, of which workers have suffered for it. And so if workers have suffered for that for 12 years, government always, government will say, no money, bear with us. And we have been patient for 12 good years. Aside that particular one, I've given you the wage differentials between the wage being, sorry, the, the minimum wage and then the base pay. Along the line, government came again saying that, not bridging the gap, government came again saying that, look, I don't have resources can I pay you cola in 2014? We agreed. We agreed to that particular one in 2014 because we believe that we need to help Madagana to get all these things resolved. Mm. And then the following year, 2015, before we say that the increment that came was 30%, meaning mm. that technically speaking, it was that 3% that government gave us because if you take the 10% out of the 30%, you're left with 3%. So that was 3% that we were giving. I bear in mind that there was no movement or there was no increment on the on the base pay in the year 2014. Mm -hmm. And so this time around, we said, look, we cannot allow this kind of wrongs to continue. Otherwise, a day is coming, it will have serious and terrible, terrible effect on the worker, particularly okay. when the worker is okay. going on retirement. Okay. So, but, but, but once you've not once this, you've not had the invitation. When are you expecting to be invited to this meeting for this 
uh, negotiation to be concluded. So we move forward. Well, I, we cannot determine that. We discussed with government, and government told us that the government side uh, told us that they will, they will let us know the next line of action. So we are waiting for them. We are waiting. We are ready. Anytime they call, we'll go and negotiate. We are waiting for them. Okay. All right. I'm grateful uh, that you could join Thank us. Thank you very much. God so bless that, uh, you. Thomas Musa is the General Secretary of NAT. Let's return to our uh, earlier stories about the uh, World Fisheries Day being today, the 21st November, celebrated around the world by fishing communities. In a recent United Nations study, it reported that more than two-thirds of the world's fisheries have been overfished or are fully harvested, and more than one-third are in a state of decline because of factors such as loss of essential fish habitat, pollution, and global warming. The World Fisheries Day helps in highlighting the critical importance to human lives of water and the lives it sustains, both in and out of water. One of the challenges confronting fisheries in Ghana is cycle. But let's speak to, uh, uh, but, but we're asking what has the country done in tackling cycle and what has been achieved so far? Joining us on Zoom is the National Convener for Fisheries Alliance, Ghana, Che Kwajo Yamwa. Thank you so much for joining us here. What is the state of fisheries today in Ghana? Yes, thank you very much. Um, the state of fisheries in Ghana, um, as we know, has not been too good. And uh, there are measures being put in place to try to address them. What it means is that the fisheries is being overfished to the extent that uh, most fish resources uh, have declined. Those days, we used to have bumper harvest. And in the season, you see sardinella, popularly known as eban or amane, everywhere. Now, for some years now, you don't see it. That is a typical sign that uh, our fisheries are near collapsed. And it is because of these reasons that um, government and stakeholders have even uh, advocated for closed season to be introduced to try to get the stock uh, to uh, be conserved so that they can spawn and then we can reproduce. So in Ghana, the fishery sector is in a steep decline. And if uh, much is not done uh, in the near future, we may not have fish as we see. And Ghanaians, as we know, consume a lot of fish and uh, the per capita consumption of fish is high and also increased employment for a lot of the fishing coastal communities. In fact, when you take fishing away, there is nothing else. So fish is very important mm. uh, for the Ghana, okay. Ghanaian economy. Mm. So today being World Fisheries Day, the day that we rehash the importance of fisheries, we discuss the challenges and then we all collectively look at what are the solutions what yeah. can we collect? So, so, so once we are talking about fisheries, one major challenge uh, confronting or which used to confront the fisheries sector uh, is a cycle or what cycle? What is the state today? How is cycle still impacting on the fisheries sector as we speak? Yes, uh, let me just say that when we, when, when we discuss about cycle, we talk about the uh, illegal uh, transshipment um, that from um, industrial trawl to canoes or uh, fish that trawlers are not supposed to catch, that they catch, we mean the small pelagic fisheries or the airband that we all know, and then we deny our local fishers of these. Um, what we know now is that the cycle as we speak in illegal transshipment uh, is not happening. And then um, because also of directives that have been put in place uh, for all trawlers to relook at their fishing gears, and also additional directive being put by Ghana Maritime Authorities that most trawlers have not been able to respond to, so they are not actively fishing as we speak now. But the most concern is that the level of juvenile fishes that are harvested as part of, in quote, the bigger cycle discussion, and also the juvenile fishes that are harvested and the uh, small pelagic fisheries that are harvested by the trawlers, which should be available for uh, the multitude of fishermen and us as a nation, because that is what we depend on. We call it the, the people's fish. That has been the discussion on how we can strengthen measures to address it. We are very happy that the gear directive uh, has come to ensure that trawlers um, do a sort of a modification of their gears or review certain uh, construction diameters to ensure that their gears reduces the volume of juvenile fish and the volume of small pelagic fish that they used to harvest. And um, when these uh, 
uh, gear directive is fully implemented, we would now know how these new gears are responding, whether they are really reducing the volumes of uh, juvenile fish harvested and small pelagic harvested and making them now available for our local fishes. So this is um, yet to be fully implemented. So we hope that um, once they are implemented, we can see the results as we want them to be. Without mm. protecting the small pelagic fishes and the juvenile fish, we will be fishing down the drain. What that means is that we would gradually lead to a total collapse of the fishery because mm. there will not be any fish left to spawn. Or not well, be any well, fish well, left. But, but, but if I understand you, if I understand you, the small pelagics that are that the big vessels bring, they, they do uh, land the fish at Tema. So it means that there is no challenge there. Or is there something that a country is losing because of that, that practice? The challenge there is that though they are landing in, in Tema, they, they are landing in Tema and they are being uh, 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 inspected, the challenge is that the juvenile fish and the small pelagic fish is still, that they are not supposed to harvest, is still being harvested or is still being landed. And we will need to address that element. And that is why we are happy that a new directive, a gear directive has come up so that the trawl would now use and apply this new directive and then we'll see a reduction in the juvenile fishes. Because even though you are landing legally, the content of the land includes some illegal fish because you are not supposed to land juvenile fish. There's a prescribed size of length of fish that you are supposed to land, and most okay. of them are okay. below that. So okay. that is a challenge that we are hoping that this new directive would address. Why am I saying we are hoping? The new directive is here to be fully implemented and the fishers go to sea and then use those gears, come up back on land, and we see now the composition of the fish that is now landed by them to see whether we have been able to adequately deal with the small pelagics and the juvenile fish in the landings of the trawlers. Okay, all right. I'm grateful, uh, Che Kwajo Yamwa, for joining us. He is the National Convener for the Fisheries Alliance Ghana. Now, let's take you live to the Obra Sport at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, where the planting for food and jobs market train is making it stop. My colleague, Michael Papani, is there and joins us live with more. Michael, what can you report? Papani, if, if you can hear me, I'm, I'm just asking you what is happening there. What can you let us know about uh, what's happening at the PFJ market at Obrasport? Great. So, Brace, this, is, this will actually be the first time government's PFG market is coming to uh, cycle and its environment. Currently, we are at a brass spot uh, where individuals are coming here now in their numbers. The news is just getting out that the market is not ready to sell. And so many people are here in a frenzy, um, bargaining to get a good price of what ordinary also will be getting on the market. Let me give you, let me paint a very good picture of what exactly is happening now before we talk to some of the patrons here. So this is a vehicle that just came here. You can see that uh, we are loading the entire vehicle. It tells you probably how good uh, the price it is and how much they are getting it. Um, probably it's a good uh, price. So the entire vehicle, and uh, it's only the driver's seat and one passenger seat uh, that has been left here. The entire vehicle is now full of bunches of plantain, all from government's PFJ market. Uh, sir, please, who, who, who's, whose items are those? Uh, who, whose items are those? Do you know who they are for? Yeah. Are they for you? Yes. Wow. I mean, uh, how, how much did all of that cost you? Uh, almost 500 cities. 500 Ghana cities? But why did you buy so much? Um, oh, we use it for restaurants. Yes. But is it just for you? Uh, no, it's for, it's for a corporate business. It's a corporate business. What are you going to use it for? It's for a restaurant. A restaurant? Yes. Uh, why, why do you find it prudent to come and buy from this particular market, not the regular market? Um, this is an opportunity for uh, you to grab, so you just have to be here and just have it for yourself. Quickly, would you say it's cheaper here or it's more expensive here? Okay, so to speak the truth, it's cheaper. 
very cheap. Uh, if you compare the price, what are you talking about? How cheap is it? Much cheaper. Yeah. What's your name? Felix. Felix, okay, great. Felix, thank you very much. Uh, so, Felix says they are from a restaurant. Uh, they thought it prudent to rather buy from here. I mean, it's worse. The planting here is much cheaper than what you'd ordinarily find on the market here. So, there are more people coming in who are hoping to buy from government's PFJ market here. Again, we should put across that the security here to try to protect the women. Um, over the days that they've been doing this, there's been a mad rush for the plantain and many people um, I mean, have been harassing the women that have been selling the plantain here. Uh, let me try and find out from some of those who have come to this market uh, to buy on what their expectations. Does this meet the expectation? Are you here to buy? Yeah, yeah. Well, what have you bought so far? You said? What have you bought so far? Oh, this is mine. How, how much did that cost you? Uh, I think 75 cities for five. Wow. So you bought five bunches? Yeah. And that's 75 Ghana yeah. cities. Why, why buy so much? Uh, it's for me and my friends. Why, why you, did they ask you to buy for them? Yeah, yeah, they asked me to buy for them. But why are you buying from this particular market? Why am I buying these from, not, not from a, a market to this place? I think this is far better than the market. Why are you talking about far better? I mean, how? Quantify it. Because, because you can get this one. When you go to the market, you can get this one as 30 CDs. Uh -huh. But here it's 15 CDs, so it's good. That's, that's half the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See. Uh, so well, I would advise everyone to come here to come and buy. Okay, well, so person, what are you going to use yours for? Uh, I'm going to use it for red plantain for my children. Yes, we are going to eat it in the house. Okay, yeah. great. So finally though, some other people have made a concern that why only plantain? If government can sell it this cheap, that it should be introducing some more um, other variety to just plantain. Yeah, we think it's not only the plantain they will sell. If they have, uh, they have, they brought more uh, more goods than more uh, 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 with the plantain is okay. So what, what are you expecting when you talk about more goods? Which which other like, ones are you expecting? You see, now we cannot buy rice because exporting rice to Ghana is cost a lot because 80 some are selling last price you will get is 80 cities but when we have local rice I think 50 60 we can buy local rice I see. Now, apart from the local rice well, what else are you looking for? and I think maize because these are three things we usually eat more in Ghana okay. Banku, Fufui and rice yeah what's your name Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, Sarah Neti. Okay, Sarah, thank you very much. Yeah, so, we just spoke to Sarah and she's much elated to buy from government's market here. Yeah. Uh, but again, the call for some more variety to be added to what is sold here. Yeah. She says, all right, if added, will help uh, this particular situation much better. Let me, before I wrap up, let me speak to just a, a handful of other individuals who are also here to buy and see what um, is in for them here. Uh, I, I see that you've bought a lot. How much have you bought so far? <laughs> I've bought like six. Six bunches? Yeah. How much did that cost you? It's now up to 50 cities. Wow. That, 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 is that not cheating the woman? Because only you would have bought that like three times the price on the market. It's actually the price I came to meet here and it's cool. So I need to take advantage of it. But why are you buying so much? Okay, I'm buying, I'm buying some for my household too. Okay. I see. So compare this, the price you are getting here to that on the market. I mean, how, how much do you save on every bunch that you're buying? Okay, the last time I bought some at the market for 70 cities. So by far, I can say I've saved a lot. Let me thank you very much. I didn't get your name. Rosina. Thank you very much, Rosina. So Rosina has been buying a lot um, since morning here. Yeah. Uh, she tells me she's making a lot of savings by deciding to come to this market. Yeah, let me find some of the market women finally on what is happening here, how soon they hope to finish this. And one of the big questions, where is this plantain from? Whose market is this plantain coming from? Uh, the lady here is in charge of the bunch that is here. Uh, 
it's, it's in different categories. The one here is 25 cities, if I'm not mistaken. The one in your shot is 20 Ghana cities, and the others are 15 and 10 Ghana cities here. Well, they tell me they have to weigh it to determine which category it will fall on. But let me ask you quickly, how soon is this going to finish? Oh, maybe by 12. By 12, and it's, it's around 10, so two hours to go, and it will be finished. Yes. But there's a question on the minds of people. Where, where are these planting from? Uh, the girl. Okay. The girl. Uh, tomorrow ones will come from Sishi. Yours. But whose farms are these coming from? Uh, because the market women also complain that they go and get it from the same farms. I want to believe that you're getting them from. But they have to sell it at a higher cost than what is being sold here. Oh, the thing is, this one is from a uh, Ministry of Agriculture. He is the one supporting it so that everyone can buy. So they can compare the ministry for agri to their own. It can't be possible. Mm -hmm. You go straight to the farm and brought it here. They too, they will buy it, a transitor until they will be here. But we will go straight to the farm and buy it and bring it here. I didn't get your name. Baby from Trouble Constituency. Baby, thank you very much. Yeah. So, these are some reactions from the PFJ market at the Obra spot. Many more people continue to come in, and there's a queue that is already building up. Whilst the news travels, that the market is now at Obra spot, much closer to some other people who wanted it closer to them. But the concern is that when is government going to be adding some more variety to the plantain that is selling here? What well, government has already responded says as we're working assiduously to get uh, some more other food items onto this particular market. But until then, we don't know when exactly that is going to happen. Uh, so this is what is happening here, uh, Brace, from the PFG market at Obras Sport. Okay. All right. Um, uh, th thank you very much. Uh, that's Papani from the Obras Sport there. Now, let's talk about the economy now. And uh, former President John Romani Mohamed is talking. She, he says, the economic hardship is taking a toll on Ghanaians. Now, according to him, followers of Christ are unable to give huge offerings due to economic hardship, which has affected the pocket of Ghanaians. He therefore entreated Christians to pray for him and the National Democratic Congress to win the 2024 general elections to rescue Ghana from hardship. He was speaking at the 175th anniversary Thanksgiving service of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church Ghana in Ho. It was an electrifying experience at the whole Jubilee Park where members of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church Ghana from across the world converged for the 175th anniversary Thanksgiving service. They danced to the glory of the Lord for how far he had brought the faith organization which has over a thousand branches, established over a thousand schools, eight health institutions among others. In a sermon, the moderator of the General Assembly of the EP Church Ghana, Right Reverend Dr. Lieutenant Colonel Bliss Agbeko retired, advised Christians to remain righteous followers of Christ and persevere to the very end. Anyone called into leadership at any phase that I've mentioned, if there is anything to desire or to practice, is righteousness. Beloved in Christ, be famous for righteousness, be hated for righteousness, be loved for righteousness, be known for righteousness. Be the symbol and presence of righteousness. Don't be a fraudster. Don't use the name of Jesus or the name of God to rob people. Don't be a thief in the house of God. Don't practice corruption of any form. Be righteous. Former President John Dramani Mahama, who was a guest of honor, acknowledged the church's role in the development of the country. He implored the church to pray for the NDC to win power to rescue the country from the current economic hardships. We must always spread Christian love, especially in this time when money doesn't like noise. I mean, we could tell the hardship in the system from the appeal for funds. 
uh, when it was 2000, uh, Madam Chair Ameza and a few people came and donated. Then it came down to 1,000, then to 500, then to 100, 200, and 100. And then when it got to the silver collection, one CD, two CDs, ah, the place was full. <laughs> it shows that the pocket is not too good, you know. But we appreciate even the one CD you put in, the two CDs you put in, is very much appreciated. After we pray for Pakistan, uh, I should also say a special prayer for me and for the NDC. <laughs> so that in some years, just coming. Luck will smile on us. God will smile on us. And give us the power to come and rescue this country from the suffering we are going through. The 175th anniversary celebration was used to raise funds for the construction of an ultramodern conference facility for the EP Church Ghana. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News. Now, the Israeli government says it is collaborating with Ghana's Ministry of Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs to establish a mechanism that will facilitate easy travel into the state of Israel. Ghana has a significant Christian population of over 70%, with many applying yearly to embark on a spiritual pilgrimage to Jerusalem, an area which holds many relics of religious significance. Travels were largely restricted owing to the COVID-19 pandemic, but many now have the opportunity to embark on the journey with the lifting of restrictions. Speaking on foreign affairs on the Joy News channel, Israeli ambassador to Ghana, Shlomet Sufa, says the outfit is recording an ever-increasing demand for travels into Israel, hence the need to establish a joint mechanism that will eliminate bottlenecks in the visa acquisition process. Well, Israel is uh, the Holy Land and the land of the Bible, so we attract pilgrims, uh, mainly Christians, but not only Christians, from all over the world. We cherish this very much. We highly appreciate this, um, um, tour this kind of tourism, the Christian uh, pilgrimage, as well as others. And um, we are encountering, especially since um, um, all restrictions have been lifted after COVID and free travel and free movement are back and we, we see flights and we are encountering an ever-increasing demand of, um, of people from Ghana that wish to travel to Israel and they approach the embassy and we, we are very much uh, positive about this. We, we are cherishing this and we're working with the um, government of Ghana, you know, okay. to establish a mechanism that will, will aim to have a swift process as possible for, for now there are hurdles, sorry? Uh, are there hurdles in, in, in the religious tourism aspect? Not necessarily hurdles, but uh, the visa process is is it takes time so in order to make this as smooth as as swift as the hurdles right. but uh, the visa process is is it takes time so in order to make this as smooth as as swift as possible it's better to work hand in hand with the ministry of chieftaincy with um, many churches all over the country to to establish such a mechanism that will allow better um, and, and quicker issuance of visas. Have you started the process already? Because we keep seeing uh, lots of our religious leaders um, encourage their, their church members to travel to Israel. Yes, we definitely, we definitely feel <laughs> that. <laughs> and yes, the, the process, as far as I'm aware, it's, uh, it's already uh, in process working. Uh, Madam Ambassador, is there anything you'd want Ghanaians to know uh, aside all that we've talked about today? Yes, I'm happy to, to share with you as we've started this interview that the relations between Ghana and Israel are very warm, very close and there's a good sense that there's a lot of willingness both on Ghana's government, Israel government to take the, those relations and 
deepen them, enhance them. And I feel very lucky to be here as an ambassador of Israel in this time with so many possibilities and opportunities to work more on our relations. News Desk here on the Journey Channel. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with business. Stay with us. Hi, welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Civil Society Organization Send Ghana is calling on government to introduce innovative measures to raise revenue for the 2023 budget. Key amongst them is the introduction of a sugar beverage tax on, importi on imported sugar products, which sometimes adversely affects the health of consumers. According to Send Ghana, these products contribute to pressure on health facilities and the need to raise revenue to support government. Here's Deputy Country Director for Send Ghana, Dr. Emmanuel Aifa. Another thing in terms of revenue generation that we think should be looked at is sugar sweetened beverages tax that people think that it's important to introduce it. One key important factor is that it's going to adversely have uh, very good, not adverse basis, but going to have very good impact as far as our public health is concerned. Because sugar sweetened beverages are things that goes to affect increased diabetes, obesity and whatnot. When that happens, it increases the cost of households to healthcare expenditure. It increases also our country's expenditure on healthcare. In the same vein, it also helps them to generate some revenue for the country. The argument that when you flap it, there are a lot of taxes and it's regressive and whatnot. But the research out there in South Africa, in Mexico, in Spain, and about 40 countries that have actually implemented sugar sweetened beverage tax shows that it is not as regressive as we, we people argue to be. It also shows that it increases revenue um, for the country. So that is one thing that we think government should be looking at in terms of revenue. Our players in the hospitality industry are lamenting the difficulty in keeping graduates from tertiary institutions. They say many products from the hospitality training institutions refuse non-managerial positions and are not suitable for available jobs. The trend, they say, is difficult and costly to manage and is affecting customer patronage. The Ghana Hotels Association, Ashanti, is currently reviewing policies to provide career growth opportunities and a healthy working environment for staff in the industry. There's more in this report. The Tourism Federation says the cost of finding, hiring and training new staff is affecting the industry. Regional Chairman of the Federation, David Unina, says the lack of the sector-specific skilled workers is affecting customers. He says the Ghana Hotel Association is liaison with academia to bridge the gap. He was speaking at a two-day workshop to review advocacy strategies and action plans for the industry. We like to liaise with the institutions, the universities and the polytechnics and other so that they will produce the requisite or the, the materials that we want. Therefore, when they come, we don't have to train them. It's as a result of training them with some of the hotels saying that, why should I invest in a person who will leave? But when we, we, they are already trained, when you can, we give them a small orientation, they will remain in the industry. And we are also going to ensure that the, uh, the tourism players motivate and then we're, um, 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 good, good remuneration to these um, workers. Academia has been faulted for producing half-baked graduates for the hospitality sector, but lack of infrastructure in hospitality-related tertiary institutions has been identified as a barrier preventing lecturers from imbibing the requisite skills in students. Lecturer at the Akentenapia Minka University of Skills Training and Entrepreneurial Development, Nafis Salam, says this accounts for the poor work attitude of some graduates. But you know we have others who are not serious and because we don't have the facilities has been the same since time immemorial you see the facility was uh, built with maybe a number of students in mind like 10 uh, 50 40 but looking at the number of students we have now we even go to the practical room some hide behind others and they don't do anything 
So when such people go out into the industry, it becomes a problem. They are not able to do anything. So the industry players rather called us uh, having misunderstanding with us for not teaching the uh, students what is expected of them. The two-day workshop is an initiative of the Pathway for Sustainable Employment for Women and Youth. Organized in collaboration with the Ghana Hotels Association, it is aimed at improving working conditions for people and employers in the tourism value chain. Charles Kusi Apiakubi is facilitator. Some of the findings we had in an earlier engagement. So today we're able to identify that there are more to be done to enhance the growth of the industry. And so far, uh, we're pushing to the next level, which is the implementation. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. And that's uh, business post is coming up next. Do stay tuned. Welcome back from the break. Time for us to bring you sports and the man with everything from the world of sports. Lawrence is here. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Brace. I'm good. That was a spectacular opening there. Well, I, thought, I thought it's one of, not obviously not the best games we've seen, but then it's one, uh, one of the poorest we've seen from the host country. And well, it's not surprising that their first host nation to lose their opening game mm. at the World Cup. Um, well, I think credit will have to go to the country like Equator because I thought they put the brakes in the second half of the game and then it could have easily be a smashing of Qatar yesterday. Mm. We were all the but you, you don't think it was Qatar's strategy that kept them at bay. You I, rather think I, I don't think so. relax. Yeah, I really they, they, I they relax. in a competition where probably you get you get to a point where goals matter will matter. The, this is why I thought they relaxed. You see, in the in the first half, they played with much intention. They played with intensity, they approached the game as if they want to kill it from the scratch. When they came back in the second half, you um, the, there was this mode for that, Moses Saicedo. Mm. He relaxed a bit in his game because normally you see him pushing forward, trying to break through passes uh, or break through the defenses of the opposition. But he, he seemed a bit laid back. He was tackling the mode for trying to control affairs, pull down the game. And I thought that was playing majority part, part of uh, Ecuador not scoring again in the second half. Mm. You realize that at some point, too, they decided to pull off some players to give rest to them. Mm. It, looking forward to the next game. So I, I don't think uh, Qatar put, put up a good performance. But then if you are um, Muntarit Mohamed, yeah, Ghanian who came yeah, off the bench, yeah. I think you will be very, very proud of the minutes yes. you enjoy because yeah. he came in and you saw he played with some intention. I love that was, that effort that went over the bar. It was a and, and solid and play. Please mention of yeah. a, a Ghanian back or something. It was a solid play, really. I think he, he deserved mean. to start. Mm. But we can't take anything away from them. It's a first game. The, I'm sure they have learned their mistakes. Mm. And then they will go on to do better. Today we see Senegal, the first African country to take the first step at the World Cup. They play in the Netherlands at 4 p.m. Senegal will be the star man. Sadio Mane, I think it's a big loss, not just for Senegal, but it's for the whole of Africa. Mm -hmm. See the impact Sadio Mane has had on this Senegalese team. Look right from the Africa Cup of Nations to their World Cup qualifiers to the playoff against Egypt. He was so instrumental. And then to see Painful. him miss Painful. the World Cup, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Painful. But then all the same, Senegal have to put their heads together, mm. try to motivate themselves and play to mm. honor Sadio Mane because mm. I thought that's the only way they could at least they can motivate his yeah. boys to, mm -hmm. to do that. To do it. But before Senegal play the Netherlands, I think um, England will also play Iran in another group. But Senegal game. is in the group of Qatar. Yes. Why are they playing at 4 p.m. when they should have been the next to play? We, we also try to ask questions, but yeah, the, mm. <laughs> the organization is, the organizing body is, is one that comes okay. up with the fixtures. Right. So England will play Iran. What time? At 1 p p.m. Okay. Before the last game of the day is Wales and then USA. That's um, also at 7. 7 p.m. Yeah, that's, oh. that's one game that we should all be looking out mm. to. I think Wales have not been at the World Cup for some time now. It that's takes Gary Bill. years. Gary Bill's okay. impact to get them there. So playing against USA, another. USA are carrying a, um, a younger team to the World Cup as well, just like Ghana. So I think two teams who are looking to impress on the world mm. stage, it should be a cracking one to look forward to. But what do you recall the opening ceremony? I mean, I, it's spectacular for me. You know, to, I'm told it, it cost them over two hundred billion dollars to put that show together. That, that, that's what I also read yesterday. That's think, close to Ghana's yes, uh, 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 public debt, isn't it? 
Yesterday we we asked a question on social media, um, how you rank the opening ceremony as compared to the last four four editions that mm. we've seen, and people were quite open open on their mm. opinion because mm. some were rating it as the first. Okay. I think for me, mm. not just because I'm an African, but I think the South Africa one stood out for me as okay. well. All right, yeah. then. okay, thank you. And that's uh, the spot for you. That's how we wrap up today's bulletin. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. Have a great morning.